Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Um, well, this morning my guest is um, human rights lawyer Libros Oshoma. As always, Libros, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. You know, uh, and now the um, leader of the uh, prescribed uh, IPOB, uh, who is uh, back in town having been rearrested by uh, the authorities. Um, it's like the story continues in the sense that. Um, Okay, uh, the United Kingdom, you know, you must have heard in the news, uh, has announced that it will be seeking explanations from the federal government on Kanu's arrest. Um, so that immediately brings about um, the whole uh, uh, sort, of, sort of a legal aspect to it. That's because Namde Kanu, as you know, through the news, actually holds two passports, Nigerian and uh, British passports. So uh, but the British people have come in. The UK, Britain says that um, it'll be asking for explanations, and it said that um, it'll be monitoring our proceedings as they go along. Now, um, uh, Libras, because uh, before, before all of that, people would have said, it's a Nigerian matter. You know, uh, why is Britain seeking interest? But the fact that he's holding the UK passport, yeah. um, what strictures does this place on? you know, situations? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, we need to understand, um, you know, the foundation for all of this. You know, a dual national, um, and then um, a Nigerian, a British citizen, a Nigerian who is carrying a British passport, you know, all of those things. Um, a Nigerian by, by bet can acquire the citizenship of any other country. It's legal. But... A Nigerian by naturalization cannot acquire the citizenship of another country. Constitutionally speaking, the moment you acquire the citizenship of another country, the legal implication is that you have, you know, publicly revoke the citizenship that you acquired, Nigerian citizenship that you acquired by naturalization. So for Kanu, he can legally acquire the citizenship of any other country, which mm -hmm. he has done mm -hmm. by acquiring British citizenship. And we know so many Nigerians who are, have um, dual nationalities and carry dual passport. Yeah, but that said, even British citizens that commit crime on the soil of Nigeria, it is normal for them to ask for explanation and then ask that such person be given you know, fair trial. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, they even send staffs from their embassies to monitor proceedings and report back. Just like, you know, normal Nigerian uh, high commission would want to do in other countries. So, um, that's not out of place. That, that is their normal standard procedure for somebody who is carrying a British passport and was alleged to have committed offense in Nigeria uh, and um, especially extradited back to Nigeria through, you know, a channel said to be in African country. And some people also have argued that um, the procedure for extradition was maybe not followed. Mm -hmm. We are not clear on the procedures they followed or if um, uh, what they did was, um, if, uh, we're not clear on the, the procedures that have not been explained. Be because um, because the information has been very scanty. Very, very scanty. You know, all that they have said is that as a result of cooperation, cooperation between, between um, uh, Interpol. Interpol and I think NIA as well. Yes, and, and, and so, Nigerian first intelligence. and foremost, um, Namdi Kanu was granted bail and his two passports, British passport and Nigerian passport, were deposited yes. with the federal government. That was back in 2017. 2017. So that means the government is in possession of his Nigerian passport. Mm -hmm. So if he now travels to Kenya, for example, there are some allegations that he was arrested. Initially, yeah. he said in Brazil, but his and brother Brazil, said Ethiopia yeah, his and then now Kenya. Said he was arrested in Kenya. So if he travels to Kenya with a British passport, and there is a tradition treaty between the Nigerian government and Kenya, which is established, mm -hmm. what the Nigerian government can do is to ask for his arrest in Kenya and extradite, extradited to Nigeria for the purpose of answering to crimes he had committed. Even the fact that he's carrying, he can, in his defense to the immigration, alleged crime, yes. The, the, he can, he can um, um, his defense can be, look, I, I would am a Nigerian, but I travel to this place uh, as a British citizen. But because his passport is in Nigeria, it's deposited with Nigerian government, 
The Nigerian government can also take his passport to uh, Kenya, where he's arrested to say, yes, he came here with a British passport, but this is his Nigerian passport deposited with us. And so for the purpose of this crime and for the purpose of the treaty that is between us, it might not necessarily be a court hearing, mm -hmm. but an immigration hearing mm -hmm. for the immigration to be able to make up their mind and decide whether to allow him or not. Just like the case of Ibori, Ibori was arrested with a Nigerian passport in um, United Arab uh, Emirates, and but UK requested for him on allegation of crimes that he has committed in the United Kingdom, even though he wanted to come to Nigeria. But eventually, I, I, we are also not sure if it was a court hearing or an immigration decision. Yes, Ibori's case was a court hearing, and the court decided that he should be extradited to UK to answer to the allegations of crime he's committed, even though he was carrying a Nigerian passport. But in the case of Kenya, depending on the position of the treaty, it can be an immigration hearing or a court hearing. Both are valid in law. And, and so to, uh, that, to that extent, yeah. the fact also that um, you're carrying a British passport, it's not a defense to whatever allegations of crime that might be alleged against you in that soil. Because also you have people who are British nationals who, when they commit offense in Nigeria, can be tried in Nigerian courts. As you know, there are many uh, who are concerned, um, going by you know statements, uh, both in the press and social media, uh, about the safety of uh, Namdi Khan. Yeah, you know, and um, so uh, no doubt there's that issue to it, and um, that relates to the uh, UK saying that um, it it just expects due process to be followed, yeah, every, and with due process, no harm can come to Kano. Yes, everybody, every, including me. Every, every well-meaning Nigerian expects um, also because of the presumption of innocence mm -hmm. enshrined in Section 35.6, Section 36.5 and Section 36.4 of our Constitution that every man is presumed innocent until proven otherwise by court of, uh, until pronounced otherwise by court of competent jurisdiction. So, Against that backdrop, everybody that is alleged to have committed an offense and a standing trial should be treated fairly. And then I must also say this, that because of the antecedent or because of the, the... There are two issues here, clearly. One is the sentimental issues. The other one is the legal issue. People are going to be sentimental on the fact that, yes, um, this same government had not treated the bandits and Boko Haram with the same vigor and the same strength with which they are pursuing Namdi Kano. But none of them is saying, look, there are no, these allegations against him are not right. And then secondly, there's a legal point of view. There's a legal part that will deal strictly with the law and not sentiment. And that legal part is where people are saying, you know what, let justice be done, irrespective of the position, and let fairness equity and justice be seen, manifestly seen to have been done in this matter. Because people can, you always resort, in dealing with that legal issue in the public domain, people will always flip to of the course. sentimental of issues. Of course, you know, to it's, say it's, it's natural. There. A, con a country where there is even proposal to rehabilitate mm -hmm. Boko Haram people mm -hmm. who have repented, to rehabilitate uh, people kill us be, be that or it, accommodate them. Be, be, but be that as it may, yes. that does not stop the law from taking be, its course. Because, and, and that's the focus, I think, of our conversation, the legal uh, part of it. And by the way, uh, some of the explanation and analysis that you gave at the beginning, I, I, I think we're, we're, we know that a lot of it has to be legal speculation because we simply are not privy to yes the yes stuff. Um, so uh, that, that, uh, because i needed to look at it broadly yes, because yes, of people, course of course there have been this narrative that oh, carrying a british passport mm -hmm. can nigeria validly you know arrest him or can he be extradited from exactly. another country mm -hmm. you know and then i also and needed was it to proper, lay was it proper the foundation the way because the federal government went there to say look his part passport is with us first and foremost we have also asked the british government to explain to us how he was able to travel without without these two passports that were deposited with us okay good so morning. these are back and forth uh, good morning reverend dominic good morning Yuri. thank you for calling in good morning mr libros yeah good, mo good morning reverend 
Yeah, we're not talking about arrest or not arrest now. Nami Kada has arrested and is in custody of Nigerian, pol or Nigerian uh, police or GSS. But what we try to say, because some people have come to yesterday and talked to me, well, well, that's their own personal opinion and my own emotions. What I said that security is security. If Nandi is considering security hazard in Nigeria, and bandits are considering security hazard in Nigeria, and the Boko Haram are doing the same thing, the same thing you pursue one, which is pursued you. If you can get somebody in Kenya or in London or in Brazil, can't you get somebody in Medjugorje? The one who is there assumed their of other official spokesman, the 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 the, the, the cleric who assumed their official spokesman, who tell us that hundred thousand and they want to have a marriage with Jimbo Haram and the Banji, he knew the marriage. Maybe you'll be officiated. Why not call him for question? The security is in Nigeria. All we want here is security. And I support this government, I still support it. I've been bad, I've been mocked because of this government. What I'm trying to say, let's do how do well. As the vehicle is used for the land of so we can have peace in the southeast. People in the southeast are not going to farm. So we can have peace in all over Nigeria. This is security coming to Lagos. Walk us now in the south that we love you. It's only security. Let the same thing go. Fetch A and C bridge is so we can have peace in Nigeria. If someone let him face his cause, if it's guilty, we'll go to prison. But we can't live here peacefully if we treat insecurity equally. That's what I was trying to say. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much uh, for calling yeah, in. I, I told you that uh, there are two angles to of this. Course. One is the sentimental angle, one is the legal angle. And um, ordinarily, like I said somewhere yesterday, people would have been jubilating on the street if this government had treated insecurity using the same parameters. This is me talking sentimentally now. If this government had treated insecurity using the same parameters, as we speak now, the government, the swiftness with which the government prescribed IPOP. We didn't see that same swiftness in prescribing Boko Haram or killer headsmen. And, and so, when you, fairness, fairness in every society will breed understanding and togetherness. But the moment you begin to treat some people differently from others, even in your home, that's why you always hear, try and treat all your children equally, mm. to foster togetherness. The moment you create that segregation, nepotism, nepotistic tendencies and behavior, people are going to feel, you know, l lost that sense of belonging that, look, we don't belong here. Okay. It is this same government that created the person of Namdi Kano. I say it consistently. If government had ignored him, the way Obasanjo, after arresting um, Wazurika, subsequently ignored him, Namdi Kano's phenomenon would have fizzled fiz fiz out. And if government had been fair, to everybody, not just the Igbos. We must say this. Government is not just unfair to the Igbos. They are unfair to everybody. If government had been fair to everybody, nobody would be shouting marginalization and the fact that, um, oh, oh, you know, oh, oh, uh, okay. they need to have a sense of belonging in the ethical Nigeria. Okay, because when that statement about being unfair to a particular people, I mean, you, you, this, is a, this is an assertion, allegation, that has been strongly made and that government consistently with, with evidence, denies. With denies. evidence, with evidence. I hear you. Which abounds. I, I hear you. Good morning, Mr. Yakub. Uh, good morning, sir. Then, uh, Mr. Levers. Good morning. Good morning, Alaji Yakub. Uh, yeah, thank you, my, my brother. Uh, it is very, uh, I think I will go the way Mr. George go yesterday because I, I couldn't have opportunity to go to the street yesterday. What do we really want? And then uh, this guy that that is calling for for secession, and then uh, Biafra, Biafra, and all that. And then this guy got arrested now. And then I love what uh, the federal government did. They did the right thing by taking him to court. I and then I will disagree with my brother in the studio this morning for the first time. Uh, what do we really want? When uh, Mr. Lebra says that uh, the government has not been fair to everybody, how, yes. do we, how do we really want the government to be fair to everybody? Yeah, let me the issue explain is this. The question, the question we need to have ourselves is this. The, the Yubo people and the Yoruba and the Hausa and other tribes in this country, are we, are, we, are we representing the National Assembly or not? Do we really have the governor in our federal state or not? And then the question will follow. The, the federal government, are they giving them the monthly deal that they normally went to Abuja to take? That is, that is, that is it. And then the question is this. The Igbo people, 
they supposed to have their governor. Ah, they manage these resources because they went every month. They collect allocation. Ah, they managing it. The okay. second one is that uh, they have uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Yakub, uh, thank you very much for your contribution, but. You see, we don't want to go into the merits or not of the case. Uh, I will look at the merits, but I will look, I will look at the legal issues. That we want the to look at the legal government issues. had not been fair to everybody, legally speaking. You know, I don't even want to go as far as that because there's going to be plenty of space to discuss that. But here, the whole matter about the UK um, requesting, if you know, staying just short of demanding uh, an explanation, which first of all, uh, uh, a lot of Nigerians will until they, it is explained to them, say, what is the UK requesting? But no, they have locus, so yes, as, as, yes, you, they as, do. You, they do. as you people say. They do. But we want to concern ourselves with the whole, the whole matter about how he arrived in Nigeria, that process. The, yeah. the, uh, the UK government has said that um, we expect due process to be applied. We will be monitoring very, very consistently. Uh, Abaribe, Senator Abaribe, who stood bail for him has you know you know he he, let me, let me he, quickly, he said that um Kano's rights should be respected let me quickly explain as a indeed has he prescribed let me, let me quickly explain a few things that you can't take away i spoke about the legal perspective and then also the sentimental part that you can't take away from yes. you can't First and you see, foremost, the, the sentimental. Parts, no, no. First and you know, foremost, they, they, they go Kano outside. Was standing trial. They, they, go, they go. Sorry, sir. I was going to say that the sentimental aspects go out of the lane that we decided on this morning. Yes, yes, which yes. Is, it, it, was you his know, was the way he was brought back in? He was rearrested. Uh, uh, I have it, explained that does it fulfill legal, all the yes, laws? Yes, it does. It does. Well, it does. Uh, it does. Uh, I have uh, explained that, that okay. it does. It meets all the legal <laughs> parameters between Nigeria and Kenya. The fact that he's carrying a British passport in, 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 uh, uh, is immaterial. Okay. L let me take Sam from Calabar and then we'll continue. Good morning, Sam, in Calabar. Good morning. Thank you for calling in. It Go is, ahead, please. Uh, yes. It is uh, uh, indeed a uh, thing of uh, uh, pity that we always want to bring in sentiment when the government is trying to make a headway. Nandi Kanu's uh, rearrest has nothing to do with the legality or no legality because his two passports are there. We all know that he traveled with illegal passports unless he turned out either of the passports was illegal from what he turned out. Then I think at this point we should see how we can get the matter started out at court while other insurgency the government is still trying. People are dying every day. We should leave sentiment out of this. You've gone because sentiment. Because tomorrow now the same people are coming. The same people are, <laughs> are, are, are coming to tell us that they've been marginalized for too long. I am a Calabar Aquaibon born. And there's no way I, I will really uh, subscribe or either by death or by dream to the Igbo agitation. It was a very funny. Let them leave the Niger Delta people alone. Too. If they are going for Biafra, they should first Biafra and leave Cross River and Aquaibom and learn out of it. Mm. Please, my own is that let the government continue to do what it's doing. President Buhari is better than every other person. So far, so good. We have never had any president as good as President Buhari. They should leave us alone with all this agitation. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. So once again, let me just say that we want to, we don't want to look at the merits of the federal government's case against Kano. As you said, uh, you uh, use something uh, that lawyers use a lot. Presumption of, yes, of innocence, innocence. You know, uh, in, in, so you still presume innocence. Yes. And that's why so people all are of saying, that, oh, let there be fair trial. Oh, exactly. And, and, I, and I now went exactly. a little bit further to this, say, and if you have if, left your lane, if you go a little no, bit. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm saying, if you have to look at law, law deal with precedents. There's no way you can divorce law from precedent. And if w it's a country where legal trials, where mm -hmm. precedentially mm -hmm. um, criminal trials had been transparently fair, nobody would be worried. That's why I said people would have been on the street well, right now the, to say yes. To use your expression, that's on the sentimental side. And I'm being very strict about this. Because that's what, legally. What, 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 legally. I, what I meant, uh, what, what I really meant is that, look, if anybody that nigeria wants or any other person wants mm -hmm. you go pluck them off the streets any old how 
you can ruin your own case. Yes. And we understand that. Yes. So yes. it's about was he properly brought down here uh, and under I, and, or so really and I have answered that question and I said yes okay. looking at the parameters of the law mm -hmm. looking at every provision of the law so, and the fact so that there is an extradition treaty if you go beyond that sir yes. if you go beyond that we're beginning to enter if, the murky waters if, why, of if, the if case if he were arrested in UK mm -hmm. the procedure in UK is different completely different from the procedure in other African countries. The procedure in UK is that there must be a hearing, a court hearing, an extradition hearing. There are so many Nigerians who are in UK now who are facing such hearing mm -hmm. in court. Okay. Nigerians have made requests, including the case of um, Deziani, and they will exhaust all their legal you, you know, uh, steps that they need to take and let the court decide Okay. They don't leave it for just immigration. I hear you. So, um, but in other countries, like in African countries, the immigration can decide after hearing both sides and say, okay, I believe this side better and then than this other take side. A and so based on take that. a decision based okay. on that Let and decide to release. Good morning, Elvis. Thank you for calling in. Yeah, good morning, sir. Thank you very much for calling in. Yeah, thank you. Now, you see, this issue here, I want us to, there's no way we can separate emotion from the reality. Yeah. If, if we look at it closely, the British people that are complaining and asking questions now, they are not complaining. Were they not there when well, Nabucano uh, so, Sorry, that expression, the British are not complaining. They, they what just, are they, they just, well, well, they're requiring an explanation, explanation. of the yeah, reported arrest of they, a UK holding passport person. When Nabucano jump bail, that is one question. Two, if Nabucano is carrying two passports, is he not supposed to respect the law of both countries? I can't uh, uh, hear you again. No, no, no. no I didn't say anything. I'll allow you finish and then no, no, I'll answer That's you. because yeah. I did, we didn't this say anything. We were hearing you. The law of both countries of the passport carries. Okay. The most important for me, I want the Igbos to respect the other Igbos that does not believe in what they are doing. The most Igbos are no, suffering not, as not, a result of this. Not Igbos. Let's not... Uh, 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 well, you okay. see, again, this is a, this is a problem here. Um, this is a problem here. I, the Igbos I, I are think, not on trial here. Yes, and I think that's an important point. They certainly are not on trial. Um, the individual, Namde Kano, is the person who has a case to answer uh, according to the exactly. federal authorities. Now, they have brought him, and he, he, as I was listening to Senator Abaribe say once, uh, one time, you can't say that every person, every Igbo-speaking person yes. is a member of IPOB. Even and you can't if, equate an uh, IPOB with the Igbo. Igbo exactly. That is the, Even, that you, is have, the you have to Yes. You have the lower, um, the lower uh, Niger agitation movement also, all within the Igbo it's uh, nation. So it's a tacky it issue not, because it, emotions even, are attached. Even Senator Abaribe had preached a Biafra of the mind and not a territorial Biafra. That's right. So uh, you, let's not equate IPOB with every Igbo. Thank God he also used the word that there are some who do not believe in it. And I don't want to go into what Namdi Kanu has said or didn't say because yes. you've asked me B because to, that one to, will be, you know, uh, to court. confine myself to uh, the legal position strictly and I want to do that. Okay, um, l l let me hear it from Mazio Okorafo. Uh, good morning, Mazio Okorafo. We were looking at the um, process of uh, bringing Kanu into Nigeria and whether it to, to be sure that it won't jeopardize, you know, whatever was the intention of the authorities, yeah. because things must be done right. Good morning, sir. Your good morning, but it's for Lebanon. Yes. S A N. I greet you, Mazi. S A N. You see, when uh, Barista Lebanon is on the program, you read a lot, but it's what the what statement he made there that if Barista were happy, or that the judge. You see who you are are not relating. That's another statement. Because it is good for us to test statistics from all the states. Interview people and find out their reaction about it. Now, why am I saying I'm saying this because the government has to do a lot. You wrote on your screen the legal the legal matters of this uh, uh, rearrest. Now it is now there for the Minister of Justice, the judiciary, to follow the sequence on issues like this. 
the middle of the charge, they say, is it prison or what? I don't know what they, they question. Sometimes you see another, another attachment, 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 att attendum, attendum. <laughs> Government should try as much as possible, follow the legal procedure that has to do with this type of case. So that within three weeks or one month or two months or six months, the expression of this case is gone. A situation where a case like this will be lingering. Now, when you talk about somebody said that it doesn't make sense in terms of our judiciary, it is not a question of you grab, you grab, arrest somebody, you brought this up every day. So, but let me give you an example. You, we saw what happened in Mali. Even in Spain, that is in Catalan that uh, ran to Spain uh, with what is an address. We come back to Sudan, what is happening? You saw what the, uh, the man in uh, Mali said. The man said that the French government should relax, that they will handle their case. Why? Because the French people come there as the colonial masters, extracting, 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 leaving them there. They are suffering every day. You see problems for one day in Mali. Now they have come. People are saying military, military. Rules. But the right, the military mandate is making sense. I, I pray that you will keep to the rules that before, uh, whether it's 16, 18 months, you hand over the government back to the democratically elected government in Mali. We come back home in Nigeria. Our judicial system, Mr. Libro, uh, Barista Libro, SA, at least. Tell them that they should follow the procedure on issues like this. That will make Nigeria have respect, have at least hope for our judicial system to move forward. Okay. Oh, we see that Lingrad, everybody uh, will come back there. You like it or you don't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, forget about sentiment. Let's say this, this what, what the Constitution is talking about an issue like this. Okay, Nazi, I've uh, uh, got to let go of you now because I have to rush off on a break. But thank you very much for you know, contributing to the matter. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, and um, you know, it, it's taking some doing, but we thought we'd look at the narrow lane of Namdi Kano arriving, the processes where they all in order against the backdrop of the UK government uh, requesting uh, an explanation, uh, shall we say. And, you, know, you, you, you know, there are two explanations uh, here, yes. requests. The Nigerian government had also requested the UK government to explain to them how, how Namdi Kanu was able to get another British passport or how he left Nigeria without the assistance of the Nigerian government because there was an NGO, an international NGO that wrote to Nigerian government to produce Namdi Kanu until he was cited somewhere in Israel at the Wailing Wall. You know, because at that time, the international impression was that the government had killed him. Which is why, for me, people, that's why people are asking for fairness in the trial. The army shouldn't have a role, a hand, in this trial. Let it be a court matter, stricto sensu. Because the, when the, a man the, is... The, 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 the army, in fact, I'm, I'm surprised. Where did the army, how did the army yes, come into this? Yes, because where, how did we get to where we are now? He was granted bail. And right there, right there in the court on, on Monday, when he was ready on Monday or Tuesday, when he was arraigned, he did say that... He's not been able to attend court because the army invaded his house, killed three people, and so he had to escape for his life. And so, that's why people are asking for that, fairness. That, that, that is, while, that's I, a, that's that is a, while addressing the question as to whether or not he had jumped bail. Yes. And so, so he was making the case that, uh, the case that he, he did not jump he bail. He didn't jump bail, but his bail conditions were frustrated. So that's what I'm saying. Allow the lawyers deal with this strictly. Okay. If a man uh, uh, violates his bail terms, go back to the court that granted those terms and say, this man has violated these terms. I'll revoke his bail and take him back into custody. You know, that's the way, you know, in, in civil societies, that's the way you handle such matters. That's why we're talking about fairness, equity, and justice. And um, also, there are those who are concerned for the um, fundamental, you know, rights of Namdi Kano. Those are the fundamental that, issues that, that, that have to bother with the fundamental rights. Those rights. Uh, good morning, Mr. George. Good morning, Uncle Yari, and uh, good morning to your guests. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. Uncle Yari, the government has to be careful not to allow lawyers to uh, frustrate this case, as is usually the case. This case is too critical to be frustrated. The government of Britain is a British citizen or that carries a Nigerian passport that has done what Nandekano is doing in Nigeria. If he has 
done it in, in England with the British government authority. And are they aware of the activities of Nandi Kanu and the number of people that have died out of his criminal activities in our country? We have independent, we are an independent country. You shouldn't be issuing us query as if we are still a colony under Britain. It's okay. I want Mr. Uh, Libros or Shoman to answer this question. I will, I between will. the last, between, between the time that Unamdikaro jumped there and today, how many Nigerians have lost their lives through the criminal activities of Unamdikaro? Do you know, sir? I will, so I will, I will answer your question. Today, uh, um, this uh, okay. sentiment of, the, of, of being unfair. Okay, Mr. George. That it is, you know, I think it's not something that should be promoted on the national television and mm -hmm. television by a responsible person. Mm -hmm. Why do you uh -uh. say a particular section of the country has been treated unfairly? Everywhere, everybody, not justify. just a section. Everybody, I, I have been treated well, unfairly by not, Nigeria. People will not understand. Please, no, let, don't you let, let me go there. Don't, don't let me go there. People if I tell you what Nigeria has done to me. Don't, Don't go there. Mean it. You, are, you, are, you are in the studio. You have all the time. Let me spend my own time yes. to, to express my views. People will make it up as if you are conversing for a, a section of the country that they have unfairly treated. But you don't listen to me. the fact that everybody has been unfairly treated. Okay. okay. That's not a fair statement. All right. Good morning. Thank you very much uh, for the, coming in. Now, did you want to clarify? Because, yes, when you were speaking about it, you did go to the I said question Igbos of, should not make it look as if... I said I first said Igbos are not on trial here. And we shouldn't make it look as if it was, it's only Igbos that have been unfairly treated by government in Nigeria. And that all of us, Nigerians, have been unfairly treated, including me. You know, the, I am a local government of my own. I provide my own security. Yes. I provide water for myself. In most cases, do you know how many generators I have at home? Mm. And yet, I, I am given estimated billing to pay. Government does not protect me. In most cases. And do you know how many people, how many people I had to feed through my meager earnings that ordinarily government should be catering for? Everybody in Nigeria, if, if Nigeria were Dorado, won't be complaining. Yeah, but the so part that's I can why grant I am you, saying... The part I can grant is that there are many peoples in Nigeria in Ibo. Who, who say that they have been unfairly treated. Yes, you know. so not just the Igbos. And, and government, of course, and is, not only, is battling to explain not that only they when don't you are, see any such evidence. Not only when you are appointed in government that you are fairly treated. A lot of us don't want to be in government. All we want is give the basic uh, necessities of life and everybody will be happy. You see, this so you don't ask me not to complain that if I complain to make look as if I'm supporting a section of the country. No. I have been on, on, on I, even I asked the question if the major ethnic tribes are complaining of unfair treatment and marginalization mm -hmm. what do you expect from us who are minority inside minority to talk about? Most okay. everybody rule Nigeria. Okay. Chima, thank you for holding on. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uncle. Thank you very much for calling. Yeah, I'm um See, um, I don't know why at times we Nigerians, the way we are, we are when something like this happens, I don't know how we always take it. Uncle, Uncle if you are Mam de Carlo, um, you have a case with federal government, you are on, you, you gathered a bell, and um, your case is still being ongoing, and they have raided your house. They killed hundreds of in your house. No, three people, not hundreds. You guys want to remain in that house. Hundreds? I said, sorry, the, Chima, did you say hundreds? Three, three people. Yes, over a hundred. In Afaruku, they killed over a hundred people in Afaruku. No, three, three. I don't know why people are not carrying this view. Even now, the said it. Three, three, three. The evidence doesn't that support that, that assertion. And that's why yes, I didn't that want that to go that into that all that these that areas that because that there's going to be a proper venue for all these things to be aired without any fetters at all. Uh, but I don't think this is the place. The fact that the UK is asking questions uh, and is saying that it is going to be watching very, very carefully, it might even have a representative, uh, it's against that backdrop that we're looking at. Wait a minute, that particular base, did the federal authorities cover it well? Uh, because you and I know, everybody knows that, oftentimes, a case that looks good 
a judge can throw it out because you, there was a fundamental aspect of it that was improper. And That's, like I've said, that, legally speaking, the federal government had done what they needed but to do. We can't escape some bleed. Uh, yeah, because, uh, for example, and, and all this we, we, would we take. Escape, because, for example, apart from what you are saying, um, Afeni Ferry itself, uh, I'm seeing in the papers here, has asked our President Buhari to use the very same vigor in, 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 in bringing uh, 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 killer headsmen uh, menace you know, uh, what this has to shown to is that the government has capacity to yes. deal with any crime that they want to deal with and deal with anybody they want to deal with Use, uh, within the parameters of the law. And so if you had handled this, if you have handled this one within the parameters of the law and you brought him immediately, he was brought in and he was taken back to court. Nobody's complaining. Is anybody complaining now that mm -hmm. why did you take him to court? No. No. But but so but to go into the same, other areas. The, the same you know, way. You if see, they what will they now say in court? Wait a minute. What will they be what, what will they be able to talk about in court if we begin to look at some of these issues? The man also, the court had said Justice Bita Yako is one judge I trust her judgment. I, who has been firm even while the husband was a governor mm -hmm. and she was in federal high court in Lagos here. And so the man had not even said that um, I, uh, I was the brought here illegally. No. He's saying I had not been attending because my bail was frustrated. Okay. And so the court said, inform his lawyers and that he he's hasn't back. Made any such, uh, any, uh, he hasn't made any further statement, uh, to the best of my knowledge. No. Beyond, no, that. beyond that. So, so let, let, the let, British let, government now is the one seeking for explanation. Because he, he, he carries their passport. He carries their passport. He and the only explanation you need to give them is, oh, look, this man is also a Nigerian citizen. Okay. M Mr. Adeyemi in Ikorodu, thank you for holding on. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Carry on, please. Go ahead, please. Um, I would want this, uh, Member Sushom, uh, Oshom, am I right? To yes. please explain to us, does Nigeria, Nigeria government has the right, if they have somebody to submit, if the court says you should submit your passport, can Nigeria, can a Nigerian court has a non-Nigerian citizen to submit British passports to a Nigerian court? You know fully well that that British passport is the property of British government because passports yes, are, British, are properties of the issuing country. That They're is not seizing one. your passports. Okay. No, I'm not. When, when, you know, when it was granted, they, they asked that yes. they submitted this uh, traveling document. Validly. So, can a Nigerian court ask for British passports to be submitted yes. to a Nigerian court? When yes. It was, uh, you know, yes. That is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I want to refer to the statement of Mr. George. Mr. George may be benefiting from this country. <laughs> you understand? Know, or the government as it is, as it now. But everybody knows that Nigerians are not happy with government in Nigeria. <laughs> not this one, but not only this not one. Not only this one, yes, I agree. You understand? Know, so, but, but how do you know? How, how do you know that, that Mr. George is benefiting from this government? government? How do you know because that? Of, because, of the, because of the way he was talking. No, was no, talking no, no, I would then, I would not be disagree. No, I, I think that's really clear in the past. People are marginalized. Everybody is struggling okay. to meet up with one thing or the other that government was supposed to have provided. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for calling to in, answer Mr. Adi, your, your question, <laughs> um, I am not holding brief for Mr. George, but it is not everybody that supports the government that is benefiting from the government. No. And it is not in everybody fact, that criticizes the fact, government our, that hates the government. Our regular caller, Mr. George, ha has had reason, I think more than on one occasion To in disagree past, with the to, government. To, to to even say that he is not benefiting anything but that he voted this administration and uh, President Buhari some because people of his believe that they voted. Even Mr. George has since said that he's disappointed exactly. with the results. But and so it doesn't mean that he's in, benefiting. In context. And then on the illegal issue, the government, the court is not seizing that no. property. What they are doing is for us to be sure that you will be around to attend I, I think the trial. question was that, can it be done? And can the, 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 the short answer is yes. Yes, because that's what um, I'm explaining to the, him now. Because the, the, some judge, other the, judge, the judge did ask uh, Namdi Kano uh, at the time to put both his passports. Yes, in the so that of they the want to be yeah, sure yeah, yeah. that you will attend your trial yeah. all through. So yeah. not when they'll be looking for you. Even though they have asked somebody to take you on bail, the court also want to be sure so that they don't put conditions that um, will uh, allow you run away from the country. Yeah. That's why they say, the court will say, I want to hold on. I can, yeah. if you're owing me money, for example, the idea of holding I can on ask to you to deposit your passport with me. It doesn't belong to me, but I can ask for it. Wait, sir. The, the whole idea of 
asking you to deposit your passports is to take away your travel document. Yes. So that you can't travel you, beyond you can't the reaches of Even the Nigerian leave court, law Leave court system. out of it now. You're, you want to borrow money from me. Okay. And I feel this is not the kind of money I want to give without having security. Joy, I, I can ask for your passport. Joy, uh, I didn't want to. Uh, thank you very much for holding on. Go right ahead, please. Joy. Hello. Uncle, Uncle Yari, Good um, morning, ma'am. Uncle Yari, you have stopped up my credit. Oh, I'm so sorry. Please you go ahead quickly. You have stopped up my credit. Sorry. Buy so real credit and tell them it's from me. To come by now. It's not, it's not Joy. My name is Bob. I'm calling from George. Okay, Bob. My Bob. of correction is Bob. Hey, sorry, sorry. What I want sorry. to find out. Sorry, Bob. Yeah, thank you, my brother. Uh, what I want to find out. What is the issue of uh, this man? What is the issue of this man we are talking? Is he jumping bait? Oh, uh, he has something that is behind jumping bait. Is it the jumping bait that is the issue or the case? I think uh, they call him the terrorist. If he is regarded as a terrorist, or uh, probably people disturbing this country, I believe that uh, there are other people disturbing this country. People like uh, Sunday, Sunday, who they said, and people like Boko Haram. I think Boko Haram was even the first thing who has been suffering from this no, country. Boko Haram. No. He no. will start have to go to the degree of this destruction no. of these two three people, Boko Haram and this uh, NMG, and that of the Sunday. Who is which, which one is uh, is one is, is one dangerous? Mm -mm. Boko Haram okay. is almost everywhere. Uh, okay, uh, thank Boko you very much. Up every, thank, every, 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 every thank you, Bob. It's a it's you, a highly motive you, issue. You, you see, it's a highly you, motive you, issue. The, the, the I, big I, problem I is this. The big problem is this. When somebody commits a crime or allegedly commits a crime and the man is arrested, don't say, oh, why arresting him? Why not arrest others? You can ask government to use the same vigor to arrest every other person and bring everybody to book. But to say, allow him go because others have not been arrested, for me, will not be fair to our society. It is not everybody... You know, the questions that uh, Bob asked in there was whether... Uh, I think he... He, he said, he's, he, is he, he the he, only he, one disturbing... Uh, uh, also, he said, what, yeah. what are the charges, you know, that we... Yeah. Is he, the is charges he, is are he for a, a possession of firearms, terrorism, and um, operating and uh, a proscribed organization. Treasonable felony? Is yes. It, is, because yes. these are all weighty charges, yes. you know. And, and so, so, for me, it's, let's even look at the, the it's constitutional about coming, framework. It's, it's about coming back whether he did so willingly or not, to answer to those charges. That's the whole purpose of this little exercise yeah, here. I agree with you. Dramatic as it a, might a, seem. A, a little departure from this. I want to look at constitutional provisions. Sure. During the First Republic, we had, um, there was a debate, a heated debate, between Chief of Bafemi Awolo and Dr. Nandi Azikiwe on whether, if you remember the Willings Commission of 1957, there was a heated debate on whether secession and state creation should be part of our constitution. While um, Namdi Azikiwe said, look, we have, we're in this country, we're in this country together. Let's not give room for secession. Obafemi Awolowo wanted that clause. And also, the issue of state creation was also keenly debated, where Chief Obafemi Awolowo said, if you start cre state creating state, until Ikene my village becomes a state, Nigerians won't rest. Mm. And so, now, the 1999 Constitution does not contain, does not contain a clause for secession, does not contain any clause for referendum. What can we do? What we need to do is to sponsor, promote people to the National Assembly that will further argue the need for this clause to be included in our constitution so that once those clauses are there, mm -hmm. anybody can trigger the implementation of those clauses. Okay. It is not a, this, no, these are not issues is, that the United Nations but can is, take. But this is as a side note to our. These are legal, these, the, I, I these have are to legal, go there because these are legal, legal framework issue. of let, achieving let, let whatever. Let me, Mr. Oluwale in uh, Ilefe, good morning, sir. Good morning, Uncle Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Yeah, I want to address the issue of peer treatment. Uh, the, uh, the speed and alacrity with which the IPOB was prescribed was missing in the case of Mihichi Allah. Also, the killer herdsmen have not been declared terrorist or so. This is, uh, this is the double standard. Mm. And I think 
<laughs> but Meeti Allah is a cattle rarers association. But what are all the pronouncements they have been making very provocative? Okay, okay, I hear you, sir. Yeah. Uh, again, this is this, this falls. In, you see, you can put all these yes. uh, 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 points of conversation under different categories. Now, what Mr. Adeyemi has just contributed, it's it's all about. Um, for instance, Afeni Ferry has said as much yes. that look, President Buhari used the same energy in bringing Which is what I had said right menace. from the beginning. Yeah. It does not mean that you are tolerating whatever one group had done, but that look so, so that you will not. Be, this is about international diplomacy. How will how will the diplomatic community look at this case? Mind you, mind you, do you know why also? Because this person, whether you like it or not, he has a lot of followers out there. You also need to communicate to them in the body language that they will understand so that you don't unnecessarily create a matter out of somebody that you shouldn't be creating a matter out of. So that you don't make a man a hero that he doesn't de deserve. Mm. And so what you do, that's why people are saying, look, the swiftness has shown capacity that you have the capacity to deal with it the british government is saying we need explanation and and also we, we want you to be fair in you, treating you know, everybody where, where the all same of this way. is coming from i mean in case you're looking for someone to articulate them properly i don't know if you caught senator abari beza interview with yes channels, uh, yes i did you know, he, he was saying it's about you know he, he as a people as a person it's about and perception. his people they feel they don't feel included it's about the perception. Way he puts it. That's what I'm saying. So, so perception this is, is why key. nothing must be done to further that notion. Fantastic. You know, that, Fantastic. That, nothing must be done to further that notion because speaking as powerfully as he, he did and as he can, and he was quite unambiguous about this idea. So look, let the truth be told. Um, he, he constantly gets the impression that, um, you know, am I a second class citizen? He, I also that, feel the same mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. I also feel so the same way. Somebody some is telling me I shouldn't complain no, that what? government has been fair to me. And I'm saying no. Government, in as much as government now has shown me that they have the capacity to be fair. They have the capacity to go against anybody that commits crime, whether within or without Nigeria. And I am saying, I'm waking up the government to say, now I realize your strength. Mm -hmm. So please, use that same strength to make the country a safe place for all of us, for businesses to thrive, for people to create wealth, which for people what, to create which businesses. Which is what the president has stated consistently it is his is, objective. Is the, what you state is different from what people perceive. Okay. Perception is I'll, very key. I'll, I'll grant that much. I'll, yes, I'll that's that what much. I'm saying. You know. Okay, so we're, we're going to have to leave it here. Um, uh, well, thank you very much, Libros. Uh, quite a rambunctious one in the sense that, uh, as you said, when you bring sentiment to the issue, even though the word sentiment that you chose, they are facts. They, 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 yes, they, they, they are they, facts. They, they, are, but they, they are facts they, as perceived by some people. Yeah. And um, there's also this uh, narrow one. And I think but you, please you, quick, you said to us that... Add, yep. We'll add this, that people should go register and vote in the right people to Excellent. the National Assembly. I've got to run away now. But thank you very much, as always, uh, Libros Oshoma. Okay, that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.